And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believed and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Now notice what he's doing. He had the 12. And some people can deal with the 12. And they forget about the 70. Some people know about the 70 and the 12 and they can deal with that. But they never put the two together that what Jesus started was a new race of being called Christians, right? Now, when we say Christians, that was a term used derogatively against Christians. Christians didn't adopt that name, okay? In other words, they didn't embrace it, but that's what they were called. But now what we have to realize is that Jesus had to die so that he could remove sin. He had to go to the Father so that he could send the Spirit back to us. And it's better for us that he went so that we can have the Spirit. Now that he left, then he sent the Spirit back. Now understand, whenever he came into us, he recreated us. But here's the problem. We don't know who we are. Or at least we don't act like it most of the time. And we have to be now trained to go back into that at the same time. Now listen, for the most part, people come to us to learn how to get healed or how to heal the sick, and we teach them and we show them and they do it and it works and it's real and it's Bible. But I have to tell you, there is more than just healing the sick. Amen? Amen? There is righteous living. There is changing of attitude. There's a changing of a heart that causes you to be a different people. Amen? Amen? It's not just about it. You don't want to be those people that say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do these mighty things in your name? And he said, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Now, the work of iniquity they were doing was not the healing the sick. It wasn't the prophesying or casting out devils. It was the fact that they, (laughs) because iniquity is sin. It was the fact they were still practicing sin and having the power of God, which means what? You got no excuse If you live in sin and you also have the power of God and you minister to the sick and they get well and you see God do things in your life, let me tell you, you're not getting away with anything. You're being held to a higher standard because you know the reality of the Spirit of God. You know the reality of the power of God in your life and yet, for whatever reason, maybe you have not learned to hate sin. Because what you don't hate, you will continue to participate in. So you have to learn to hate what God hates. And God hates sin. Do you understand that? Now, understand, that does not mean that we are to walk around all the time going, oh, oh, did I I mess up? Oh, no. Did I? Oh, God, if I messed up, please. That's not how I live. It's not how you see anybody in the Bible live. How do we live? We live understanding that we are moving with God. Now, do we make mistakes? Yeah, right? But do we habitually live in and practice sin even like we did before we were saved? No. Why? Because if you do, you're not saved. Do you understand that? Okay, because what does saved mean? He, the Bible tells us that Jesus came to save us from our sins. Do you get that? I mean, as much as I can go through and prove that Jesus, when he died, whenever he uh, bore those stripes, that he saved us from sickness and disease and that we do not have to allow sickness or disease to live in our bodies, that we can live sickness and disease free. I can prove that. I've done it for 40 years now. I have proven it and proven it and proven it. Now, Now, think about this. To the degree that I can prove that, and have proven it, to that degree and greater can I prove that God does not want you to walk in sin. He does not expect you to continue living in sin. He expects you to turn your back on sin. That's what initial repentance is, is you turning your back on sin and living righteous before God. Now, and if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Isn't that right? And if we confess our sin, then he is just and faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. All right? Now, what does that mean? 
Should we then remain in sin so that grace can abound? God forbid. God, he doesn't say because you're in grace, sin doesn't matter anymore. It matters more. Do you understand that? Why? Because it killed Jesus. He had to die for our sins. And so when he came out of that grave, now understand, when he came out, he did several fold, like I said. One hand, paying the price for sin, but on the other hand, bearing that, well, he'd already bore the stripes, but coming out of that, the purpose now was to recreate us like himself so that we can live a life free of sin, free of condemnation, free of guilt, free of all these things. Now, the problem is there has been a false grace preached that says you shouldn't have any condemnation no matter what. That is not true. Romans 8 says that there is no condemnation to us who do what? Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right? Now, the main thing about that is this. Too many people are looking back at who they used to be, and they're trying to run from who they used to be. But they're not running to God or to who Jesus made you. You have to realize now you're a different species. Why? Because Jesus was raised from the dead. This is why the princes of this world wouldn't have crucified him if they had known what it was going to bring about. Why? Because the devil had enough problem with one Jesus. He had more problems with one Jesus and 12 disciples and even more with one Jesus, 12 disciples, and 70 others. But now he's made it where we can all have that same spirit be re recreated into his likeness and image so that now... Listen, the devil isn't dealing with one Jesus, 12 disciples, you know, 12 apostles, and then 70 other disciples. No, now he's dealing with millions of Jesuses. That's what his resurrection did. His resurrection created a new species of being that never existed before. And the problem is we're still trying to figure out what that species is supposed to look like when if you just go back and look at the Gospels, you'll see exactly how that species is supposed to look like, right? Now, that doesn't mean we're supposed to walk around in robes and sandals. Nothing against robes and sandals, right? <laughs> but it means that it's not trying to take on that outward uh, physical look. It is letting what's inside out so that you look like Jesus in your actions, mannerisms, personality, everything, amen? amen, to be recreated into his likeness and image. Now, 